Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Medicare 101 class. This is presented by the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, which is known as SHIP. Um, if you are new to learning about SHIP, we help people with Medicare questions. We have a call line that you can call or email into, um, and then we can help you with questions about your plans, um, billing questions, anything like that. So um, Barbara and Adele will talk a little bit more about that momentarily, um, but I just want to tell you a little bit about the technology. Um, you can use the technology to both raise your hand and write in questions in the questions uh, chat box. And so if you have any questions that pop up, you can send them in along the way. We are going to answer questions at the very end. And so um, we will be taking them at the end just because of the number of attendees that we have. Although we have a good time um, today, so we will have a lot of time at the end for questions. And then um, I just wanted to uh, send out some polls first before we get started. Um, the presenters, it helps them to kind of know who we're presenting with since we can't talk to you in person like we usually would. And so I'm just going to send out a few polls to get a better idea of who's here with us and maybe what you're looking for today. So the first poll you should see is, are you currently enrolled into Medicare? You can just select yes or no. That just helps us know if you're brand new to Medicare, trying to learn about it for the first time, or if maybe you're thinking about open enrollment and trying to just learn about the plans and other info for open enrollment. I'm just gonna give a few minutes for the questions to come in. Okay, 100% voted, thank you. That's awesome. Um, so we have 67% no, they are not currently enrolled into Medicare, 33% yes. So a lot of people who are new to Medicare. The next poll I'm going to send out is asking if you are currently enrolled in your, your spouse's employer plan. So this would be a current employer plan And that just helps us to know if you might be um, planning to stay on that and, and hold off on Medicare, or maybe trying to figure out which, which route you want to go. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds here. All right, so we have about 59% yes, they are currently enrolled in an employer plan, 41% no, they are not. About 50-50. Thank you all for doing that. That just helps us to know kind of how to gear the presentation for you and what information you might be looking for. I'm going to be moderating the presentation today. My name's Lauren and I'm a SHIP counselor. Um, here with Dr. Cog, which is the Denver Regional Council of Governments. And I work with Adele and Barbara, who are SHIP volunteers here as well. So if you call in for questions, there's a good chance you'll talk to one of the three of us. Um, but today I'm going to hand it off to Adele so that she can get you started with understanding your plan options a little bit better. Okay, I'm on. I hope you all can hear me. Um, you see the smiling faces on the PowerPoint, I think. And our aim today is to hope that at the end of this presentation, when you think about Medicare, you can smile instead of get a headache over it. So we're about ready to uh, start. And what we're going to cover today um, has to do with the agenda on the PowerPoint, what is Medicare? How can you enroll in Medicare for those of you who aren't already? Medicare has four parts. Those of you in Medicare know they are A, B, C, and D. And then Medicare has some preventive services that we hope uh, to be sure you all know so you can take advantage of. 
And then uh, later, a little bit later on in the presentation, Barbara will be doing more explanation about Medicare Advantage plans and Medigap or Medicare Supplement Insurance Programs. There's some important Medicare terms that we want to be sure you all understand. Also, if some of you have limited income, there are programs for you as well. There are some important dates. Uh, this October 15th to December 7th, which is open enrollment, is one of those dates. Um, then there's been a lot of fraudulent activity around Medicare, people wanting to sell you braces and cancer screenings, et cetera. And it's very important that you protect your Medicare benefits. And then there will be some contact information. Um, so that gives you an idea of what we're going to cover. To start with the very basic, those of you who are not yet on Medicare may not understand exactly how it came to be. It's health insurance. It's provided by the United States government, and it's known as Original Medicare. And um, the acronym CMS stands for Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and they administer the program. And there is the famous red, white, and blue card with the new um, mixture of letters and numbers that took the place of Social Security numbers, which is uh, one of the aims for avoiding fraud. How do you know if you're eligible for Medicare? Well, those of us who are 65 and older are. If we're younger than 65 with certain disabilities and have um, had those disabilities for a certain period of time, you're eligible for Medicare. Anyone who has end-stage renal disease, ESRD, which is basically kidney failure, or ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and only citizens who are lawfully present or individuals who are lawfully present in the United States are eligible. So that's probably not new news to most of you, but that's who is eligible. This is another one of those important dates. If you are not yet enrolled in Medicare, when should you enroll? You can enroll one to three months before your 65th birthday, the month of your birthday, or one to three months after your birthday. I always encourage people to enroll in the three months before because then your coverage will start the month you actually turn 65, which is your birthday month. If you enroll the month of your 65th birthday, it will start the next month. And if you wait for that other period of the one to three months, then it will be two to three months after you enroll. Um, those of you who have employer coverage, uh, you will come up with a different set of uh, time periods that I won't go into right this moment. But this seven-month period uh, for you, you can certainly enroll in Medicare Free Part A, but most of you will probably delay Part B, which we'll talk about more later and certainly take your questions. So if you are on Social Security benefits, you'll be automatically enrolled in Medicare if you've been on them for four months before turning 65 or you've had disability benefits for at least 24 months, or if you're receiving benefits through the Railroad Retirement Board. Again, if you're on Social Security and don't want to be on Medicare Part B, then you will defer that, uh, but I think that uh, conversation will wait just a little bit longer, uh, but I don't want you to get nervous that you have to enroll in Medicare just because you're on Social Security and you get automatically enrolled, you can defer that coverage. So Medicare Part A in 25 words or less is hospital insurance. Part B is medical insurance. Part C is also known as Medicare Advantage plans and it bundles or includes Part A, B, and usually Part D, although there are some Medicare Advantage plans that you can get that do not include Part D. And then Part D, which is really the only letter that makes sense uh, because it uh, links to drug coverage, uh, helps you with your um, drug costs. 
More specifically, aid pays for inpatient hospital care, inpatient skilled nursing care, um, blood transfusions if given to you while you're in the hospital, some kinds of home health care and hospice care, but none of these um, benefits include long-term care. So if in hospice care, you're, you have to be in a facility, then some of the hospice benefits, including medications and so forth are paid for, but the room and board costs are not covered. Part B helps cover your doctor's services. And then in um, bold is medically necessary. That is really a byword for Medicare. It has to be medically necessary. And that includes medically necessary outpatient medical and surgical services and supplies. And you'll see down there, including diabetic testing supplies, clinical lab tests, durable medical equipment, such as walkers, scooters, wheelchairs, and then preventive services, which I touched on a little bit earlier, and we'll uh, talk a little, a little bit more. Um, it, you don't want to mix up preventive services with non-preventive services. You'll pay nothing for certain preventive services, but if the doctor orders additional services, then it is possible that you'll have a co-payment or your Part B deductible will apply. And this next one is, imp I had to learn this the hard way. Um, I was used to asking for annual physicals. If you want Medicare to pay for it, when you go to your doctor after you first become eligible for Medicare, you're asking for a welcome to Medicare visit. And that is a preventive visit. And then after you've been on Medicare and you're going for your second visit, you're asking for an annual wellness visit. It isn't exactly like we understood the old physicals, but it gives your doctor a good baseline um, from which to decide what you need and to decide what non-preventive tests or services you might need. And Barbara and Lauren, if I miss anything or need clarification, you are invited to step in. So other routine preventive services are vaccinations, uh, except for shingles, which is covered under Part D. And right now, as you know, there's a big push on that we all get a flu shot. Uh, diabetes education, uh, colorectal cancer screening, uh, pardon me, cancer screening, uh, bone mass measurement, mammograms, prostate cancer screening, depression screening, and obesity and cessation counseling. So those are things to keep in mind. If you think you could benefit from any one of these, those are considered preventive services. So um, you worked and paid payroll taxes for 40 years. Therefore, if you have, Part A is premium free. If you have not, if you don't have the number of quarters required to have premium free Part A, then you will have to pay a Part A premium, uh, which is pretty costly. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, those of you who are in Medicare for sure, have all uh, are all eligible for premium free Part A or have figured it out. There is a deductible for each hospital benefit period and it isn't little. Uh, so that's where your Medicare Advantage or your Medigap plans come in. They help pay that deductible for each benefit period. And then after you pay the deductible, if, uh, the next 60 days your coinsurance should pay for it, and then in the subsequent intervening periods of time, there are different charges. And interestingly enough, um, they change every year. So they could be, these numbers could be changing for 2021. So I'm not going to belabor them. And you will have these slides, at, won't they, Lauren? Well, I'm sure yes, you thank you for mentioning that. I, I was just thinking, I forgot to mention in the beginning that we will send the slides out to everyone's email address that you signed up with. 
um, and along with a couple handouts and the recording of the webinar too. I was going to do that um, after the class. Um, it takes a few days, so it might be sometime early next week. Thank you. <clears throat> this year, everyone who has Part B either pays for the monthly premium, which in 2020 is $144.60, or if you're um, entitled to state benefits, then in this case, Colorado would be paying that premium. There is also a $198 annual deductible this year. Um, probably both of those will go up at least a little for 2021. I don't have those numbers yet. And then the thing to remember about Medicare, it generally pays at Part B 80% of covered services. And then the other 20% is up to the individual. And again, that's why we have as part of this presentation how to get some assistance to help you pay for that additional 20%. And also, it's always, I always include the language 80% of covered or Medicare approved costs. So part D then is the drug insurance plan um, operated through private or administered by private insurance companies, covers outpatient prescription drugs from your pharmacy, does not include over-the-counter med medications, and something to always remember when you're shopping for a Part D plan is to be sure that your drug is on the formulary, which means the list of drugs that that particular plan covers. So some plans will cover drug A and another plan will cover drug B, which is a similar drug, but perhaps by a different name. So it's pretty critical to be sure because if the drug is not on the formulary then you the person who takes the drug can be responsible for responsible for a hundred percent of the costs so um you do have a monthly premium and they vary i think i saw um some really low ones this year very low usually the lower the premium the higher the drug costs but that's why we at SHIP can help you shop for Part D plans. Some of the drug plans have an annual deductible that are that is applicable to certain drugs. And then there can be co-payments, which are flat fees, or co-insurance, which is a percentage of the cost for Part D. Um, and again, so you've got A, B, and then Barbara's going to talk more about C, and then D is your drug cost. So Barbara, I think with that, um, we'll shift the presentation over to you. Okay. I'm just gonna take a minute to do that. Okay, Barbara, you should have the ability to share your screen now with the slides. Thank you, Adele. Really, thank you. Well, thanks, and uh, thanks everybody for coming today. Um, for for the me uh, the Medicare Advantage plans, as Adele mentioned, are one way of dealing with the extra costs of Medicare. Uh, part, parts A and B, uh, hospital insurance and doctor insurance, are uh, supplied by the federal government, but they both in deductible and co-pays or co-insurance, which can add up to quite a bit of money if you are, um, are sick, especially, or if you have, have a lot of medical needs. So there are two ways really of dealing with this, uh, of buying extra insurance or substitute insurance that will help you with those extra costs. And one of those two ways um, is the Part C Medicare Advantage plan. 
And this is one of the two paths that you can follow when you first sign up for Medicare, is to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. The other path, which we'll, I'll talk about second, is uh, staying with original Medicare, getting your hospital and your, your doctor insurance from the federal government, and then buying supplemental insurance to go along with it. But the Medicare Advantage plans are, are bundled plans that include the services uh, under Part A, hospital insurance, Part B, medical insur insurance, and usually they include Part D as well, drug insurance. Although, as Adele mentioned, there are some Medicare Advantage plans available that do not include the Part D, and you can buy then if you want to go that direction, you can buy the, your Part D uh, separately. But it is important to have the drug coverage because the federal government requires you to have uh, coverage for prescription drugs, even though the government itself does not provide that insurance. And uh, there is a penalty, a late enrollment penalty, if you do not buy your drug coverage, either through Part C or Part D, when you first go on Medicare. Um, it is These are private insurance companies that provide your uh, Medicare Advantage plans, just like it's private insurance companies that provide the Part D plans. And there are contracts between Medicare and the companies that offer the plans, and the, the companies have to adhere to Medicare guidelines and rules in, in offering them. These Part C Medicare Advantage plans cover everything that original Medicare covers, everything that Part A and Part B covers, and sometimes, or usually these days, they, uh, they also offer additional things, uh, like incentives for you to s sign up. And they can offer um, some limited dental coverage, vision coverage, hearing benefits. And when I say limited, I mean there usually are some limits on them. For example, in the hearing benefits, you may get, um, oh, say $1,000 or $2,000 allowance toward purchase of, a hearing aid, of hearing aids, something like that. Um, also, the C Silver Sneakers fitness benefits have been very popular, and most of, uh, I won't say most, but a lot of the Medicare Advantage plans offer those. The costs associated with Medicare Advantage plans, um, you still have to pay your Part B premium to the federal government. And uh, that's required no matter wh which route you take here. You always have to continue paying that Part B premium because you have to have Part B in order to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. You have to have both Part A and B. Now, beyond that, um, some of the Medicare Advantage plans will charge an additional premium, an additional monthly premium. Some of them don't. and um, depending on the plan, and the plans vary quite a bit in their cost structures. Usually, if you pay a, a monthly premium or a higher monthly premium, then you get lower co-pays uh, like when you go to the doctor or when you have surgery or something like that. So, so there are trade-offs there. Uh, notice this important notice here, that you really need to make sure you understand what is and is not covered on a given plan before you sign up for it, because the plans do vary quite a bit, and the costs, the costs can vary quite a bit also. In most cases, when you use the plan, uh, or uh, well, I will say this, that in most cases, every time you use the plan, you will pay something. Uh, not always. Sometimes there are zero premium, uh, premi uh, sorry, zero copays when you visit a doctor. Uh, sometimes, but more often there is a copay, say twenty-five dollars, something on that order, when you visit a doctor. Maybe a higher copay when you visit a specialist. Uh, maybe you have coinsurance if you have surgery or some expensive kind of treatment, and that can be tw as much as twenty percent of the cost. So there are costs associated with this, um, and um, that, well, let me back up uh, just a moment here. 
it is important to recognize the costs and the fact that also these uh, Medicare Advantage plans do have an annual cap on your out-of-pocket costs. Now, the other route you can um, take is the Medigap or Medicare Supplement Insurance route. And this works with original Medicare. You would continue to get your Part A hospital insurance directly from the federal government, and you would get your, your uh, Part B medical insurance directly from the federal government. And so you would be paying the deductibles and the coinsurance that Adele covered earlier in the presentation for Part A and Part B. And as you saw, um, there's there's a hefty uh, deductible for the hospital insurance, and those 20% uh, coinsurance payments under Part B can add up if you have a lot of medical needs. So some people stick with the uh, original Medicare, but buy a Medigap policy from an insurance company. Also, co it, well, we usually refer to it as Medigap, but the official name is Medicare Supplement Insurance. You have to have both Part A and Part B before you can buy this, but you cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan. So it's either or. You either have a, a Part C Medicare Advantage plan or you have a, a Medigap or a Medicare Supplement plan. So uh, it's, month, it's private insurance purchased from a private insurance company you will pay a monthly premium for this insurance. And sometimes the, and this is in addition to your Part B um, monthly premium that you're paying to the federal government. Um, sometimes these monthly premiums are fairly high, fairly hefty. Um, and it depends on your age and, and the pricing structure. Uh, these policies are uh, regulated by the state of Colorado the division of insurance and so the um, the premiums that they charge are regulated and are reviewed by the state uh, before they can charge them um, there are different levels of coverage that you can buy and here's where the medicare alphabet soup gets really um, um, confusing because these um, are called also by the alphabet but we're not going to get into that today you will have a handout that, that goes into this in more detail. But the, the main thing is that there are different levels of coverage. The higher the monthly premium you pay, the, the greater the level of coverage that you, uh, that you will get for that. And uh, the highest level of coverage that's available now for people new to Medicare in 2020 or later is um, is what's called a Plan G, and it pays for everything except your Part B deductible. So that's pretty that's pretty complete coverage. Um, just to recap, you have the two paths that you can follow with Medicare. You can either uh, choose a Medicare Advantage plan, which is a bundled plan, or you can choose to stick with original Medicare where you will be using your Part A hospital insurance, your Part B medical insurance, and then a Part D prescription drug plan, standalone prescription drug plan, and a, a Medigap or Medicare supplement plan. Next, I want to go into uh, some important Medicare terms. And Medicare is like so many other things. It has its own language. And when you go on Medicare, it's important to start learning the, the language of Medicare. Uh, you'll get on, you'll, you'll understand better what it is you're getting with your insurance or what to ask for. And also you'll understand what are telling you. So uh, these are not in any particular order, but, um, but there are terms that we've selected that we thought were important for you to understand. First, assignment. What this means is that your doctor or provider or supplier uh, agrees to accept the Medicare approved amount as full payment for your covered services. Now this applies to uh, original Medicare. 
So for example, you go to the doctor and you have an ordinary doctor visit. And um, I'll just use some round numbers here uh, to illustrate it. Say your doctor bills $150 for the, for the visit and uh, files a claim with Medicare for that amount. Well, Medicare has an approved amount for that particular type of doctor visit, and maybe their approved amount is $100. So Medicare says, okay, uh, Dr. X, you're going to get $100 for this, but Medicare only pays 80%. It pays uh, uh, $80, and you're responsible for the other $20. But the important thing here is assignment. Your doctor accepts Medicare assignment, meaning it's not going to try to charge you anything more than the $100 that Medicare approves as the cost of the service. So uh, when you're choosing doctors, it's important to ask if the doctor accepts Medicare and if, it, if your doctor accepts Medicare assignment. Now, uh, inpatient. Part A, hospital insurance, only pays when you're an inpatient, meaning you are actually admitted to the hospital. It does not pay for out, outpatient or observation status. And there are a lot of services that are outpatient services like surgeries and, and uh, chemotherapy, and, and there's a whole list of them. Those services are not Part A services if they're outpatient, they are Part B services. So it's important to understand the difference there. Another thing that can happen is that you may be in the hospital under what's called observation status. Uh, you aren't actually admitted as a patient. And this, uh, the most common examples of this I've heard of is when you are, go into the, the ER, the emergency room, and, uh, and they say, well, we're not quite sure what's going on here. We wanna keep you for observation. And they may even put you in a hospital room and for as far as you can tell, you are in the hospital, but you may not have actually been admitted as an inpatient. And so it's under, important for you to understand that because uh, Part A is going to pay the hospital charges only if you are admitted as an inpatient. Otherwise, all the services that you're receiving are going to be covered under Part B if they are covered under Part B and there may be some gray areas. So um, if, the, if you're expected to be there two or more nights for medically necessary hospital care, then your doctor should admit you to the hospital. But, um, but sometimes uh, this, this is not uh, clear cut. And so it's important that you keep asking, keep asking, what is my status? Am I an inpatient or an outpatient? And if, uh, if you're there for two days and you're still an, uh, an outpatient, uh, you need to put either to be admitted as an inpatient. Okay, um, here's, here's another one, uh, advanced beneficiary notice. This is a Medicare term. I don't think any other insurance uh, uses this. Uh, it's commonly knows, known as an ABN form. So suppose you go in for some kind of treatment or uh, a lab test or whatever it is, and, and, and this apply, applies under original Medicare. Uh, if, if the uh, doctor or the provider that you go to is not sure that Medicare is gonna cover this, then, uh, or if they think that Medicare probably won't cover it, then they are obligated to give you an ABN form, an advanced beneficiary, beneficiary notice of non-coverage form, to inform you that if you go ahead and receive this service, it's very possible that Medicare won't cover it, and then you would be responsible for the costs of the service. And if you choose to go ahead and receive the service anyway, then you would accept responsibility for paying if Medicare denies the payment. You can always appeal if Medicare denies a payment. Also, if um, 
you go for a treatment or a service, and then it turns out that Medicare does not cover it, but they have not given you this form ahead of time, then you have uh, uh, the right to refuse payment. But that's uh, a complication that most of us uh, would want to avoid. Medically necessary. Adele uh, mentioned this earlier. This is a, a very, very important term in, in Medicare. Medicare pays for medically necessary um, treatments, preventive services, tests, diagnostic services. Um, who dis determines whether they're medically necessary? Well, your doctor has to determine that, and your doctor has to order medically necessary services. Um, and then, uh, of course, Medicare has to approve them as well. So that's a very important term. Uh, it applies to all services, treatments, whatever, that would be covered by Medicare. Uh, another way of saying this is that Medicare does not pay for uh, services that are optional, like, like some cosmetic surgeries, for example. Another important term for those of you who are still employed is creditable coverage. Um, this is insurance coverage, medical insurance coverage, that is comparable to or exceeds Medicare in what it covers. If you are employed and, are your, and you are planning to work past age 65, or if you are covered by spouse's insu employment insurance and that your spouse is actively employed and you're um, planning to keep that coverage past age 65, then when you do apply for Medicare, you have to show that the coverage that you have had up to that point is creditable coverage. And um, that's an, and you will have to get proof from uh, the employer's insurance plan uh, so that you won't have an enrollment penalty uh, later when you uh, enroll in, in uh, especially Part B of Medicare at a later date. Um, most employers are used to providing this proof of creditable coverage. I will warn you that during the pandemic, some, some of the procedures uh, have had to be changed uh, for how the forms are sent and received and so on and so forth. So allow plenty of, cover, of time to obtain this documentation if you are anticipating going off of employer insurance and onto Medicare. Um, now I'd like to talk about some of the, the um, programs that are available to low income people. And even if you are not low income yourself, uh, and low income generally in, in rough terms means uh, below the federal poverty level. But if you're not low income yourself, it is also good, I believe, for all of us to know about these low income programs that are available because we may have friends, family members, um, neighbors, whatever, who, who do run on hard times, who are low income, and it's good to know that help is available, especially these days. So um, if, if you're in this position or you know someone who's in this position, you can call SHIP and we will help steer you uh, to the, the low income programs that, that might be suitable for you or that you might qualify for. The first program I want to talk about is what's called low income subsidy, and this is for prescription drugs. It also goes by the name of Extra Help. This is a federal program. And so uh, you sign up through the Social Security Administration. Uh, you can also sign up online through the SSA um, website. And while I'm mentioning websites, let me just uh, give you an aside here that um, there are two official government websites that are very important when you go on Medicare. SSA.gov is a social security website and that's where you enroll in Medicare or in this case enroll in the extra help program. Um, 
The other very important website is medicare.gov. That's the Medicare official website, and that's the website that you would go to once you're on Medicare. And it has all kinds of information on it, and it has um, important tools on it too, like a plan finder to help you find your Part D plan. And I would caution you that in doing a search for Medicare websites, there are a lot of websites out there that have Medicare in their name, a lot of commercial sites. Um, many of them are run by insurance companies who want to sell you um, Medicare Advantage plans, uh, Part D plans, Medigap plans, any, any kind of Medicare related plans. Um, and of course, you will talk to insurance companies before you're through with this whole process. But to get the, the basic official Medicare information, the government uh, sanctioned Medicare information, the site to go to is medicare.gov. And it's .gov, it's not .com or .org or any, anything else. It's medicare.gov. Okay, back to extra help. This gives helps with prescription drug uh, costs, as I said. You automatically qualify if you have Medicaid coverage, and that's the low-income um, program uh, for, for medical coverage for all ages. And uh, so if you have Medicaid coverage before you turn age 65 or become Medicare eligible, then you automatically qualify for extra help. Um, if you have, if you're on a program where the state of Colorado is paying your Part B premiums for your Medicare, uh, such as Medicaid or through a Medicare savings program, then you automatically qualify for extra help. If you are on SSI, the Supplemental Security Income Benefits, uh, receive the, the monthly payment from the government. And I'm not talking about retirement Social Security. I'm talking about benefits for low income people, then you also automatically qualify. Um, it, it's not guaranteed to continue year to year. You must reapply each year. And there are income limits um, that you must uh, meet in order to qualify uh, year to year. The other um, big uh, program for low income that I want to talk about is the Medicare Savings Program, also known as MSP. And this is administered on the state level. So you have, would apply for this through the state. As it says here, Health First Colorado, which is the state Medicaid agency. Um, the Medicare Savings Program can help you with Part A or Part B premiums. Part A premiums if you don't qualify through your work history. Part B premiums, that's all of us pay Part B premiums. Um, also, it can help with co-payments and co-insurance um, under Medicare. And you would apply through Health First Colorado. There are different levels of Medicare Savings Program that give you different levels of benefits. And here are the names of those levels. Uh, it's probably not important for you to memorize these, but just be aware that these are the terms that are used, like qualified Medicare beneficiary is usually referred to as QMB, and so on and so forth. Yeah, we have acronyms for everything, like, like everybody. So this program can be a, a big help to people who are on Medicare but have limited income. Now, if you have both Medicare and Medicaid, then you are referred to as being dual eligible. And most of your healthcare costs will be covered, but it's important to understand how Medicare and Medicaid work with, uh, with each other. And people who are on Medicaid before they turn 65 and then uh, turn 65 and go on Medicare, sometimes they're tripped up by this, uh, not understanding how they work together. Medicare is your primary insurance when you're dual eligible. It will pay first, but then Medicaid pays second. 
And most of your health care costs will be covered, but it's in two steps. Medicare first, and as you recall, Medicare has its deductibles um, and its coinsurance or co-payments, and then Medicaid will come in and help pay those deductibles and co-pays that Medicare does not pay. Um, also, the other important thing to understand here is that Medicaid then ceases to cover your prescription drug um, costs once you go on Medicare. You have to sign up for a Part D plan once you're on Medicare. Now, as we observed before, if you're on Medicaid, then you will also qualify for extra help, and there will be help in paying for those prescription drugs. Your costs will be uh, quite low in most cases if you're dual eligible. Nevertheless, you still have to sign up for a plan, and, and that's important that you know that. Um, then Medicaid will pay only after Medicare pays, and then if you have employer insurance, it has to pay before Medicaid, and if you have a Medigap or Medicare supplement insurance, uh, it has to pay before Medicaid will pay. Although, frankly, most people who are on Medicaid do not have Medigap insurance. Um, they, they usually can't afford it. Now, Medicaid may cover some drug costs and other costs that Medicare does not cover. Um, notice the may there. You're, uh, there are a lot of uh, things, uh, gray areas. Let's talk about important dates. First, the initial enrollment period when you turn 65. And uh, Adele has already talked about this. It's a three, it's a seven month period in total, starting three months before your birthday month, including your birthday month, and then the three months after the birthday month. And um, for most of us, this is a, our first time for in, enrolling in Medicare. And um, it's also important to know that when you enroll in Medicare or buy any of the Medicare-related insurance, coverage always starts on the first day of the month. So um, say your birthday is um, October 20th. Well, your coverage would start October 1st. So it's important to enroll in Medicare in advance of your birthday month so that your coverage can start on the first day of your birthday month. And you have three months prior to do that. Uh, don't try to do it earlier than that because uh, Social Security won't accept your application earlier than that. But you can apply as much as three months ahead of time. You can apply, you can still apply within the three months following your birthday month and not be penalized, but um, your your start of your Medicare will be delayed. And then if you are on Social Security Disability, SSDI, then your Medicare uh, will start on the 24th month of your um, SSDI benefits. There is a general enrollment period for people who missed somehow their initial enrollment period. And, and uh, we'll talk in a minute about the special enrollment period for those who are employed. But this is uh, for people who simply miss their general enrollment period. And, uh, and you really don't want to go here. Uh, if you can avoid this, do. If you need to sign up either during your initial enrollment period or during a special enrollment period for those who are uh, drawing employment insurance. Um, the general enrollment period is January 1st to March 31st of each year. That's the time during which you can submit your application for Parts A and or B. The coverage begins July 1st. And a late enrollment penalty is accruing all of the time that you could have had Medicare but did not get enrolled. Uh, and so, and that is a late enrollment penalty that stays. So as I say, this is something that you want to avoid if you possibly can. Special enrollments of a, uh, periods are available for uh, certain 
circumstances. So um, if you're losing creditable coverage, creditable coverage from employment, and this is from active employment, it, it does not include uh, retiree insurance from an employer. This is active employment insurance. Um, so you have a, a special enrollment period of eight months following when your your employment insurance ends. Yours or your spouse employment insurance ends. And uh, you notice the note here that COBRA is not creditable coverage. So don't count COBRA here. Um, you have that eight month period during which you can sign up for Medicare without a late enrollment penalty. But you want to anticipate when you're going to be losing that insurance, when you're going to be retiring, um, um, if you can, when you're uh, going to lose that job, so that you can get your Medicare set up in advance to begin when your employment insurance ends. There are other circumstances where you can get a special enrollment period, such as um, a move out of the uh, the uh, territory that a, that a plan that you're on covered, um, that kind of thing, or if your plan that you're on uh, simply doesn't renew. Um, also, if you are on extra help, you can make changes in your drug coverage or your uh, Medicare Advantage plan once per quarter. Or if you are on a me Medicare Savings Program or Medicaid um, uh, program, or if you have Medicaid status as a dual eligible, then you also have circumstances under which you can make changes outside of the regular enrollment periods. And then finally, open enrollment. This is what we all look forward to every year, October 15th through December 7th of every year. This is the time when you can add, drop, or change plans, Medicare Advantage plans, Part D drug plans. There's no penalty for changes made during this open enrollment. You can, um, and, and you are guaranteed that the plan will accept you uh, if you're choosing a Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D plan or changing any of these plans during this time. So many, uh, open enrollment is very important for those who follow the path of Medica uh, Medicare Advantage plans. And it's also very important for those who follow the path of original Medicare to change their Part D drug plans. Um, open enrollment, though, does not apply to Medigap plans. Uh, there is, is no automatic um, enrollment or re-enrollment on those plans. If you want to make changes in those plans, you can apply at any time during the year. But there are limits on, on changes that can be made. Now there also is, a, is, this is fairly new, a Medicare Advantage open enrollment period during the first three months of the year. Uh, if you enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan during open enrollment and then uh, January comes around and you say, whoops, I think I, I made a mistake, I don't like this plan that I signed up for, then you can change to a different Medicare Advantage plan during this uh, Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. Also, you can switch back to original Medicare and add a Part D plan if you want to during this time. Um, and you see the warning there about you, you may, if you had dropped the Medigap plan, you may or may not get that policy back. That depends on the insurance company. Um, what you can do, do during this Medicare Advantage open enrollment, though, is if you can switch from one Medicare Advantage plan to a different Medicare Advantage plan. And you can only make one change during this three-month period. About Medigaps, the, there's an important thing to know about them, and that's the guaranteed issue right. When you first go on Medicare, you have a six-month period when you have a right a guaranteed issue right to buy a Medigap plan with um, with no uh, what they call in the insurance industry underwriting, meaning the insurance company cannot ask you any health questions, cannot deny you coverage because of pre-existing conditions. But that is limited in time, and once you pass past that time, then um, then you don't have guaranteed issue any longer. 
So it's an important decision which path of Medicare that you want to follow. And uh, because you may or may not find it easy to go back and forth between the two paths later at a later point in time. Now we we'll want to say a few words about protecting your Medicare benefits. Uh, Medicare fraud is a huge problem and we can all help prevent it or, or curtail it. First, guard your Medicare card. Guard it the same way you would guard your credit card. Don't show it to anybody and everybody who might ask you for it or if you get phone calls, um, emails, anything like that, you know, people unsolicited people say, well, if it, uh, I could get you a free this or that or the other thing under Medicare, oh, all, all I need is your Medicare number, uh, be extremely suspicious. Only show it when you receive medical services that you have requested yourself, such as when you go to your doctor or you go to the pharmacy and you would show your Part D card or your Medicare Advantage card for, for your pharmacy services. Second, you will receive uh, from Medicare each quarter what's called a Medicare summary notice. It's what you're used to as an explanation of benefits. And uh, it's a monthly or quarterly report of all of the claims that have been submitted to Medicare on your behalf with your Medicare number. Review it, uh, look for errors, look for uh, duplications, anything that doesn't look right. And uh, uh, it is important to do that because some of the scammers uh, will, will do this, will charge Medicare for services that you never received or charge twice for services that you did receive. And so the third thing here is report, report, report. You can report anything suspicious or any errors to us at SHIP. You can report them directly to Medicare, um, but, but if you report them up to us, then we'll get them to the right channels. Finally, um, we can always use more volunteers. Um, I'm a volunteer SHIP counselor and have been for about eight years now, and, and I love the work. It, it's uh, very interesting and um, challenging. I'm always learning something new about Medicare, even after all this time. And there is training available and certification. The training is, uh, is thorough. It comes from Medicare itself. That's great. There's also opportunities for volunteers in outreach and publicity. And, uh, and you can do things like teach classes like Adele and I are doing today. And you can do other, other things. Uh, well, depending on the times, not, we don't attend health fairs during the pandemic, but uh, we do a lot of work over the phone and by um, on the computer. And then finally, here is contact information. And the only thing that is not correct here is that we do not do walk-ins right now, but we do do one-on-one uh, -on -one phone calls by appointment, or you, uh, you can call the phone number on your screen during the office hours that are noted, or if you call outside of office hours, you can leave a message and uh, you will get a call back and, and we can give you individual help. With, with your Medicare questions or your Medicare problems. So thank you for coming today. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Lauren and, um, and for questions. Thank you, Adele and Barbara. That was a wonderful presentation. It just goes to show the awesome volunteers that we have here. Um, and so if you're interested in those opportunities, feel free to reach out to me. Um, with questions about that, um, our email on there will get to me and I can answer any questions you might have or you can raise your hand or chat your question. I'm just gonna take a look here. I'm trying to look, there's so many places on this webinar to look <laughs> to see if we have any questions. So I'm just gonna start out with the hands. Okay, I see Barbara Peterson has her hand up. So Barbara, I'm gonna call on to you. And you should be able to talk now. You might have to unmute yourself. Oh, 
Maybe that one works. Um, Barbara, are you there? No. Uh, uh, Barbara, can you hear us? Uh, let's see. I'll just have to see if there's. Okay. I um, you can chat your question in the questions box, Barbara, if you. I want to do that. I'm going to lower your hand, or if you're um, ready for a question, you can raise it again. It sounded like you might not be ready. So let's we'll see if we have any questions in the question box. No questions. All right. I'll give it a couple minutes just to see if anything comes in. Dell and Barbara, you must have been super thorough today. <laughs> or we got them so or we got them so confused they don't know how to ask any questions <laughs> you know lauren i would just say that um the comment that we get over and over again for people who are first time in medicare is how confusing it can be and that's one of the reasons I think that um, SHIP was created, because even if you get the wonderful handbook that's available to people, Medicare and you 2021, um, if you try to read through it, your eyes will glaze over. And so it's a good resource, but um, if you really wanna talk something through or try to figure out what's best for you, that's actually why they established state health insurance assistance program. So we welcome your confusion along with your questions. That's a great comment. Yeah, that is absolutely the um, most, I think, common call that we get, and especially when people are new to Medicare. And that's why we call it that alphabet soup of what are all these different parts and what does it mean? Um, I'm not seeing any questions. And so I just want to say, that um, please hold on to our phone number. I'm gonna send it out in the chat box here as well as our email. And if you have any questions that come up, um, you can reach out to us. Maybe you think, I, I know sometimes people have more personalized questions about themselves as far as how to determine what plan is best for them. And so maybe you're thinking, well, I won't ask in this group setting, but I will um, call afterwards. So I'm sending out our phone number and our email to where you can reach out to set up a one-to-one -one appointment because I know a lot of you are not yet on Medicare, which means you're probably new and trying to figure this out for the first time. Um, and while I was doing that, a question did come in. Oops, sorry, Rona, I didn't see your hand up. I'm gonna go to Rona who has a question and I'm gonna find you here. Okay, okay Rona, talk. Hi, uh, my question is, um, Barbara mentioned that if uh, we're on Medicaid before switching to Medicare, we automatically qualify for extra help, but qualifying for and um, being uh, registered for or automatically applying for two different things. So I just was unclear on that. Um, well, I wish I could say that it always goes smoothly, but it doesn't always go smoothly. Um, theoretically, if you are on Medicaid and your Medicaid continues after you're on Medicare, then you will automatically be uh, put on extra help and automatically assigned to a Part D drug plan. But uh, as I say, it doesn't always happen smoothly like that. So Lauren, could you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. And right now we have a pretty unique experience with Medicaid going on where anyone who was in Medicaid enrolled in a program um, when the pandemic started around March, April has been locked into those programs that they were in at that time. And so sometimes that means when you go on to Medicare, you might need to switch a program and that's not happening. So if you are turning um, 65 or going on Medicare because of disability, 
and you have had Medicaid in the past, I would just say right off the bat, um, give us a call so that we can look at exactly what programs you're in and what you should be in for the future and make sure it does happen as it should because um, there's just a few snags going on right now. And it's very personalized, so it will depend exactly on people's income and assets on where they will fall and what programs they'll qualify for. Um, when Barbara was doing that presentation and she so showed all those long names like qualified Medicare beneficiary, which goes as QMB, and then um, QI1 and all these others, um, those are all gonna be dependent on your income is where you fall. So I would say give us a call um, so that we can look at your exact income and asset and then be able to give you a more specific answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. So you got a few questions here. Let me try and look at these. Um, so Frank asked, what about dental and vision coverage? Let me just say that <clears throat> Medicare in and of itself does not cover dental or vision services, except I guess vision in the occasion of cataract surgery or, or dental work if it's medically necessary, for example, done by an oral surgeon. Um, but if you want regular dental services, as I think of them, cleanings, root canals, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the Medicare Advantage plans, as Barbara indicated, do offer, and the word is limited. And when you um, work with us or work yourself on the plan finder, the plan finder per provider will give you some, at least initial thoughts about what the dental and vision benefits will be. Uh, but we again always advise you to see from the plan what the actual limits are. So Barbara, you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think you said it well. And uh, the other thought that comes to me, uh, which I I don't remember if I mentioned it before or not, all of the Medicare Advantage plans have networks of providers that uh, participate in the plan, and I believe that applies to the dentists also and so you do have if the plan is what's called an hmo uh, more alphabet soup um, but you may have heard that term before if if it's an hmo it means you do have to stay within the network to get coverage if it's a ppo you may be able to go outside the network but you will pay more outside of the network um, so there's one more thing to think about when you're thinking about getting dental coverage with uh, with a Medicare Advantage plan. Perfect. You can also the... pay for, uh, you can pay for plans, separate plans, but my experience is you want to be really sure that the private plan you pay for outside of Medicare, uh, if you choose to purchase a plan independently, you want to read the terms very carefully because often they will cover the least expensive uh, services and not the ones that you really need the insurance for. So you wanna be sure that you read the contract or the service provisions carefully. Perfect, thank you. And then we have another question here from Alan. It says, I have a health insurance agent who discourages Advantage plans because people are attracted to them by low premiums, but then are blindsided by high co-pays and co-insurance when they have a significant issue. Can you comment on that? Well, uh, I wouldn't disagree with that assessment. It, it is one <laughs> of the things you have to think about in choosing an Advantage plan versus original Medicare. And one of the handouts that we have available, I believe they'll be distributed at the end, um, is, is actually an excellent uh, summary of the differences between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. And uh, cost is one of the differences because with um, Medicare Advantage, you may have low monthly costs, 
but then if you do run into serious health issues, then you may have very significant costs in, in co-pays and co-insurance. Whereas with, if you go the other route with um, original Medicare plus a Medigap plan, you'll, you may pay quite a bit in monthly premiums, but uh, your costs don't go up much, if any, if you run into significant health issues. Uh, you, you can be very well covered uh, with a Medigap plan. So that, that is one of the issues to look at in comparing uh, the two routes. You know, I would say to people often, pay now or pay later. It kind of depends on your risk tolerance, the state of your health, um, and also like any other insurance, if you, if you purchase a Medigap plan, and you look at your monthly payments and you think, you know, I'm in really good health, what am I paying for? Um, well, the issue is you never know what's coming down the pipe. So would you rather be safe and pay more per month but not know if it's going to do you any good? And it's not dissimilar from car insurance or any other kind of insurance. If you don't need it, you wish you weren't paying for it. But if you need it, you're very glad you have it. So you know, insurance is insurance, and um, making the perfect decision is about impossible when it comes to Medicare plans, in my view. That's, uh, that's my, those are my views. I don't want to speak for everybody. I'm just going to, I know you can't see this on the screen, but this is the handout I'm talking about. This is what it looks like, and, and there, it's two pages. And it, it's a nice chart that gives you side-by-side -side comparison of the two paths. Yes, and I will be sending that out. Um, the recording takes a few days to upload, so I'm going to send the handout with the recording probably early next week. You should receive that at the email that you signed up with. Um, and it will be coming from a Dr. Cog, uh, which again is the Denver Regional Council of Governments um, email address. So we'll say drcog.org at the end. And um, yeah, you both bring up a great points with that. I, I always tell people you don't have a crystal ball. So it's often really hard to make that decision, particularly when you're in good health and you don't know if you'll need it later on or not. Um, so like Adele said, it's, it's, it can be nearly impossible to know what the right choice is. But I think a lot of times, as long as people understand what they're signing up for, what they're getting, and what may happen in the future if they do have those costs, they're generally more happy with the plan than when they're surprised and buy a big bill at the office or didn't know that they had that potential to pay, pay that amount. One other thing to remind people that Barbara said, with Advantage plans, there is a cap at, that shows on the uh, plan comparison chart so that once you hit, it's called the um, Medicare out-of-pocket maximums. If you, in other words, if you were running up a million dollars worth of, of um, services that you needed to pay for, the Advantage plans do have a cap that would limit the amount you would pay per year. So that's a good thing to keep in mind as well. Yeah, great point. Yeah, that, that is where, um, like we saw in the beginning, a lot of people are new to Medicare. This is the question that people are, are asking themselves as they're trying to determine the best plan for them. And so you can call us at SHIP for help with this, and we can have a one-to-one -one appointment on the phone where we can answer your questions um, about this. I did have a, a response from Be Rebecca come in just saying, thank you for your time today. I appreciate the information you have provided. So I just wanted to share that with you both, Adele and Barbara. And then we had another question come in here. It says, after I sign up for Part B, how long do I have to sign up for Part D and Medigap before paying a penalty? Do I have time to do some research into the plans? Well, uh Generally, I advise people to do that research ahead of time. Um, if you're if you're either if you're turning 65, you have uh, the three months prior, uh, or you can even start a year in advance doing the research if you want to. Or if you're planning to leave your job, or your spouse is going to leave his or her job, 
and plan in advance, do the research, find out what's available. You, you do have um, a period of time after you enroll in Medicare to, to enroll in either an Advantage plan or a Part D plan without penalty. And um, help me out with this, Adele and Lauren. I think it's, um, I forgot how many months. I think you have, have eight months. You have eight months uh, to sign up for A and B, uh, but you only have six months if you want to get a Medigap plan um, after you're eligible for Part B. And then my understanding, and Lauren, you may have to correct me here, is you have 63 days within which to get a Part D plan once you're exactly. on Medicare A and B. So it's confusing. It's eight months for one thing, six months for another, and 63 days for a third. So you want to get those firmly in your in your head when you're uh, when you're going on to Medicare. But, and but I, the, oh, go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> another reason, though, for for doing it in advance and and signing up for the plan so that it will become effective the same month that your mm -hmm. Medicare is effective is so that you don't have a gap in coverage. I mean, if you're leaving a, a marketplace plan or an employer plan or whatever it is you're leaving, it, chances are it's going to end when your Medicare is uh, effective. And so you want your Medicare related insurance to be effective the same month that your Medicare is effective uh, so that you have complete coverage. Good yeah, point. and I was just going to say those complicated dates are just a, another reason I'll plug SHIP again to call us and just make sure you're on the right timeline with things and that you're not missing something or waiting too long so that you don't end up with one of those penalties um, because you might have missed one of those days. It's so hard to keep track of all the dates and, and we do this all the time and we're still going, okay, it's this date, this date. Um, so it, absolutely reach out, make sure you're on the right track with dates. And then like Barbara said, if you're doing it so there's no gap in coverage, then you know that you're probably on the right track there. You're doing it with, as soon as possible versus potentially going over and beyond and, and missing your time to enroll. So it looks like that's all the questions we have. I'll just remind everyone um, as they had said in the presentation, open enrollment is October 15th to December 7th. So it's a great time to review your plan. It's gonna be starting tomorrow. Um, so you can call SHIP um, to get help with reviewing your plan options. You can also go on medicare.gov, like Barbara said, to use their plan finder tool to look at plans and shop around. And then if you have any questions as you're using that website, we use that website ourselves, so we can always help you if it's a tech question with Plan Finder or it's a content question, we can help you out with that. So please do reach out to us. Um, and as you're going through your, your plan materials with questions, um, we'll be there to help you. So I will send out those resources to you, both the handouts and the recording of this presentation. You can feel free to share it with others if you'd like. And then we'll also include our SHIP phone number and email so that you can always call us with questions. And we are here year round, not just during open enrollment. So you can call us any time of the, of the month or year. <laughs> Thank you, Adele and Barbara for your presentation. That was wonderful. You all have a good day. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. All right, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>